going to talk about the Poisson random variable. The Poisson random variable. So let's define it. A random variable x taking on some values, taking on actually taking on one of the values 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 and so on is said to be a percent random variable is said to be a Oops, let's spell it correctly. Said to be a Poisson random variable, but there needs to be a parameter. With a parameter lambda that has some properties. If for any positive lambda, it turns out that the probability that x equals i uh, is nothing more than, so this is, let's write it down, the probability that x equals i is nothing more than e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Now, it turns out that this is a probability distribution function. And the reason is, so let's state it this way, since, oops, since the summation as i goes from 1 to infinity of p of i equals 1, I'm going to show that, it follows its PDF. Well, this is equal to the summation as i goes from 0 to infinity, I just wrote this down, times p of i, where p of i was defined above. This e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Now, this summation is over the letter i. The e to the negative lambda is not a function of i. It's a constant. I can factor it out in front. e to the negative lambda times the summation as i goes from 0 to infinity of lambda to the i over i factorial. And since I don't need much more to write, I'm going to write up here. This is equal to e to the negative lambda times this. But that you should recognize as e to the lambda. And if the bases are the same, we add the exponents. We keep the base, we add the exponents. Lambda plus negative lambda, or negative lambda plus lambda is 0. And e to the 0 is 1. So, yes. Yes. It's a PDF. It turns out it is a PDF. The Poisson distribution, or, or the Poisson random variable is a PDF, the probability distribution function. Now, what is, what's nice about the Poisson random variable is that we can use it to approximate the binomial random variable. We can use it to approximate a binomial random variable. Let's state this more formally. The Poisson random variable approximates the binomial random variable with parameters np. 
remember, a binomial random variable, you have to tell it the number of times you're going to run this binomial experiment, and you have to tell it the probability success. But there's a little bit more. The Poisson random vari variable approximates the binomial random vari variable with parameter n and p when n is large. And I guess NP is a moderate size. NP is a moderate size. It's, n it's not very large compared to N. It is a moderate size. For some, well, let me not say that. Let me not say it that way. So I now want to show that this statement that I just wrote is true, that the Poisson under this condition does approximate the binomial random variable. So, suppose x is a binomial random variable with parameters np. And how about we let, we let lambda equals n times p. So the probability that x equals i for the binomial is going to be n choose i times p to the i times the probability of failure, p the probability of success, 1 minus p the probability of failure, which is 1 minus p, and that's going to be raised to the n minus i. We're going to play some games with this. First, let's write down what that is. That's n factorial over i factorial times n minus i factorial times p to the i times, I'm going to write this as a division, 1 minus p, 1 minus p. So the bases are the same. Like if you have x to the 7, over x to the 4, you subtract the powers. That is, the 7 can go on the top, and the 4 goes on the bottom. The n goes on the top, minus the i goes on the bottom. After all, when you subtract those two exponents, you really, really do get n minus i. Okay. Let's get this side work out of the way. Now, let's see what else we want to do with this. I have to think about this one. Okay. Now, remember that lambda is NP, which means that P is lambda divided by N. Just divide both sides by N. And why am I saying that? For one reason only. I keep seeing p all over the place. So this is equal to n factorial over i factorial n minus i factorial times p to the i. The p is lambda over n. Lambda over n to the i times 1 minus p, which is lambda over n. And this rate gets raised to the nth power and then we divide by the same base, 1 minus lambda over n, and this is to the ith power. Okay.
letter. So let me use a different color. Let us do this division first. That's n times n minus 1 all the way down to n minus i for one more. One more. Think about why that's true. And then I'm going to divide this by n to the i. Okay, so everything I'm about to circle, everything I circle is what I used. N to the I. Now, I guess I'll say next lambda to the I over I factorial. Lambda to the I over I factorial. And then I'll write this down. Then I'll write that down. 1 minus lambda over n to the nth power divided by 1 minus lambda over n to the i power. Then I come to the top. I'm going to make some reasonable statements at this point. Remember, we said this is only true if n is large. The binomial, excuse me, the Poisson approximates the binomial only if n is large and np is not extremely large, just moderately sized. Okay. So, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus i plus 1. Now, I want to know how many factors I just wrote. And I know, forget this one for the moment. For example, suppose over here I wrote 11 factors. Well then, including the first factor, it will be 12. It will be one more. So let's count. This is the first factor. Oh, look, look what comes after the, the n minus. It's 1. This is the second factor. Oh, look at that. Look what comes after the minus. What you need to realize is that's n minus i minus 1. Because it's n, you have to take away i, and you have to take away negative 1, which means add 1, which is exactly what that says. So, this one here is the i minus first factor. So, this is the first factor, this is the second, we have the third, the fourth, the fifth, and eventually the i minus first. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, we forgot to count the first one. Well, if you have i minus one, and you add one, you have i. That's i factors. Okay. So let me erase it and write it down neatly, and we're going to remember that it's I factors. I'm multiplying I things. N, N minus 1, N minus 2, all the way up to N minus I plus 1. And we're dividing this by n to the i. I'm basically looking at this on the bottom. I'm looking at that on the bottom. Now, if n is extremely large, this here is approximately n. In fact, it is n. This is approximately n. This is approximately n. This is approximately n. And we're multiplying n by things close to n by itself n times. So we get approximately n to the i. And when we divide it by n to the i, it's 1. This mess is very, very close to 1. It's very close to 1. 1 minus lambda over n 
raised to the n. If n is extremely large, this is e to the negative lambda. If n is large, it's e to the negative lambda. And the last one we need to talk about is 1 minus lambda over n to the i. Okay. I want to see how I want to argue this. Lambda is NP over N to the I. The Ns cancel out. You get 1 minus a number between 0 and 1 to the I. But in, in fact, we said, oh, we, did, we didn't say that NP was large. In fact, that makes no sense. This here, 1 minus lambda over n to the i, this is very, very close to 1. This is approximately 1. Okay. So now, we're going to look at that bottom line. And somehow, I'm going to sneak it in here. I'm going to sneak it in here. And we have, for n very large, for n very large, uh, p of i, p of i, it equals to what's down here. But for n large, we just said that this piece is close to 1 times lambda to the i over i factorial. Lambda to the i over i factorial. That's this part. And this numerator is e close to e to the negative lambda. I should say approximately. And the bottom 1 minus lambda over n to the i, we said that's close to 1. All the 1's are meaningless. Multiplying, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. Well, we get e to the negative lambda times lambda to the i divided by i factorial. But this is exactly the Poisson formula for p of i. So if n is very large and np is not so large, everything works out well. If np is not so large and n is extremely large, this is close to 0. And 1 minus close to 0 is very close to 1. You multiply numbers extremely close to 1 a few times, you'll get about 1. 0.99999 times itself a few times will not, will be still very close to a 1. Okay. So we just proved that the Poisson distribution, or the Poisson random variable, approximates the random variable. So now, as long as we're willing to get an approximate answer, we can use Poisson instead of the binomial. For example, let's talk about making typos, say when you're typing a letter. Suppose the number of typos on a page has a Poisson distribution. Suppose the number of typos on a page follows a Poisson distribution. 
suppose that. So that would have to be given with the parameter. With the parameter, say lambda equaling the half. Okay, so we're given lambda, and we're told that it's supposed this problem has a percent distribution. And we want to calculate the probability that there is at least one error on the page. At least one error on the page. Okay, now you don't know how many characters are on the page. You can have no errors, you can have one error, you can have two errors, you can have 3,000 errors, you can have 22 million errors. But you know, you can't have 23 million errors because there aren't even 23 characters on the page. So if you're going to use the Passantist, excuse me, you're going to use the binomial random variable, the binomial distribution, where would you stop? Suppose you didn't, you know, you're going to do the probability you have one error plus the probability you have two errors, etc. But you wouldn't know where to stop. And that's one, this is one case where you would use the percent distribution. Of course, if you wanted to do binomial, you could use our complements. And I'm even going to use complements with the percent. Okay, so let x equal the number of typos on the page. So we want to know the probability that x is at least one. It's one or more. Why don't we use a complement? Why don't we use find the probability of why don't we do one minus the probability of not being one or bigger? That is zero. If you're not greater than or equal to one, if the number of errors on the page is not greater than or equal to one, it must be zero. So this is 1 minus, and we're going to work on this. Okay, well, lambda was given to be a half, and that's i. i is that number, and lambda is a half. So it's 1 minus e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i, over i factorial which is 1 minus e to the lambda, excuse me, to the negative lambda, lambda half to the i divided by i factorial. Well, this here is 1, and 0 factorial is 1, so you just get 1 minus e to the negative a half. And Using my calculator just told me that's very close to 0.39. If you were to use the binomial theorem, you would get a close answer. I do have one slight error on my page. I'm very, very big with equality symbols. If things aren't equal, we should not say they're equal. It's approximately 0.39. So let's try another problem. Let's talk about light bulbs. The probability that a light bulb is defective is 0.1. Okay, suppose the probability of a light bulb being defective is 0.1. You have 
a huge quantity of light bulbs and 0.1 of them are bad. One in a thousand are bad. Okay. So now suppose we want to find the probability that a sample of 10 light bulbs will contain at most one defective. Will contain at most one defective light bulb. Okay, so let's do this problem twice. Since it said find the probability, now approximate the probability, we can't use the Poisson distribution. So this is a binomial problem. The Poisson will approximate it. So we'll do it twice. We'll find the exact answer and then we'll use the Poisson to approximate it. Okay, so the exact answer is going to be, well, you want at most one. That means zero or one. So let x equal the number of defective bulbs. You can have zero bulbs, or that means plus, or you can have one bulb. You can have both zero and one, so that's why I'm not going to take away the intersection. Now, having zero bulbs, well, let's see. There are 10 bulbs, and we, oops, so let me write 10 and not n. There are 10 bulbs, and we want none of them to be defective. The probability of defective is 0.1. The probability of being good is 0.9. 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9. We want zero defective, and we want our all tend to be good. Plus, the probability that we have exactly one defective. So from the 10, we want to choose one. Probability of being defective, the probability of not being defective. We want one defective, we want nine not defective. And a quick calculation on my calculator, on my calculator, tells me 0 0.7361. Now, what if we want to use the Poisson? What if we want to use the Poisson distribution? We should be able to do this same problem using the Poisson. So, the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability, let me say 0 first plus the probability that x is 1. Well, this is the exact answer. This is what we want. Well, I'm going to approximate it. Now, here we're going to say lambda is n times p. There are 10 times we're doing this experiment. There's 10 light bulbs. And the probability of success that is being defective is 0.1 turns out that that's 1. Lambda is 1. And first I'm going to do this one. So that means i is 0. So we have e to the negative lambda times lambda to the i over i factorial plus lambda is still 1. But now i is also 1. So we have e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Now this is 1, and 1 to the 1 is 1. 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1. That is, this here is just e to the negative 1. 
this is equal to e to the negative 1 plus, well, since this is 1, e to the negative 1 times 1 is e to the negative 1. We get 2e to the negative 1. That is, our problem is approximately 2 times e to the negative 1. That is, it's approximately 2 over e. And again, using my trusty calculator, I get 0.7358. And if you notice, these numbers are pretty good. If you rounded them off to three decimals, this would be 0.736. And since that's a 5, I'd bump that. I would bump it, sorry, since this is 5 or more, since the 8 is 5 or more, I would bump up the number before to 6. I get 736. But even if we kept it the way we did, 7361, 0.7358, they're pretty close. Okay, so we can use the Poisson. To be honest, if you real, you should realize when you add the same thing, whether they're friendly looking or not, you get two of them. 2e to the negative 1. 2 over e, I can do on my calculator fairly easily. Doing this on my calculator isn't that easy. Doing this one on my calculator isn't that easy. Adding up those four decimal place numbers isn't easy. The percent was a bit easier. And up to three decimal places, I got the correct answer. So, if what you're designing or, you know, if you don't have to get a very, very exact answer, you can use the percent. And N wasn't even all that large. Now, whenever we talk about these random variables, binomials or even percent, we should talk about the expected value. Now, E of x, well, by definition, that's the summation of, instead of x, I'll say i, it's i times p of i, as i goes, in this case, from 0 to infinity. This is the summation, as i goes from 0 to infinity, of i times p of i. But I know p of i is e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i, all over i factorial. Now we're summing over. Well, let me say one thing first. This mess, when i starts off at 0, will be 0. So I might as well just say it starts at 1. This is the summation as i goes from 1 to infinity of i, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i, over i factorial. Okay, so this is the summation. First I'll notice that that has no i's in it. So it's a constant, I can factor it out. The next thing I'll notice is i over i factorial. You know, it's like 7 over 7 factorial. Just remember, 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But that's 6 factorial. It's 7 over 7 times 6 factorial. 7 over 7 is 1. You get 1 over 6 factorial. And likewise, 8 over 8 factorial well, I have sevens here, and I have one less, six. This is one over one less than eight, is seven factorial. I over I factorial will be one over I minus one factorial. The reason I don't write the one on top is because I have times lambda to the I. Now, I hate having 
i's and i minus ones. Let's get every and and i goes from one to infinity. Let's get everything to be i minus one. Remember, lambda to the i is lambda to the one times lambda to the i minus one. When you add those powers, you get i, just like we should. And the lambda to the one, I can just write as lambda. And lambda doesn't have any i's associated with it, so I can pull it out in front of the summation sign. So I have lambda times e to the negative lambda, and then here I pulled out a lambda, so I have one less, i minus one, over i minus one factorial. And i starts from one to infinity. Now that they're both i minus ones, I'm going to say, my goodness, this is too complicated. I wish there was no minus one or no plus three. I'm going to let j be i minus one. So I have lambda e to the negative lambda, the summation of lambda to the i minus one. Well, that's j, lambda to the j over i minus 1 is j factorial. Now, what does j start with? Well, if i is equal to 1, if i starts at 1, if I take away 1 from both sides, then i minus 1 will start with 0. But i minus 1 is j, so j starts with 0. And it goes up to infinity minus 1, which is still infinity. Okay, so we have this times that. Lambda e to the negative lambda times. Well, what's in the bracket is something we should know. It's e to the lambda. And that's 1. And lambda times 1 is lambda the expected value of a Poisson distribution is lambda. It's just lambda. Okay, so that's the expected value. Now we're going to try to figure out what the variance is. Remember, the variance is e of x squared minus e of x squared. Well, we have what e of x is. We have what e of x is. It's lambda. And then when we're ready, we'll square it. So first we have to find e of x squared. And instead of x, I'll call it i. It's i squared. It's this times p of i. Times p of i. And i goes from 0 to infinity. The summation as i goes from 0 to infinity of i squared times p of i, so Poisson, is e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Okay. So we're going to play the same game. This factor has no i's in it. We're summing over i's, so I can pull it in front of the summation. And I'm going to, i squared is i times i. There's the first i. Now, i divided by i factorial, we've already done. This is i minus 1 factorial times lambda to the i times lambda to the i. And i goes from 0 to infinity. But when i is 0, it's going to be 0 times a positive number to the 0, which is 0, over i minus 1 factorial. So we can just say we're starting at 1. That is, i is starting with 1. We have e to the negative lambda, i times lambda to the 1, 
sorry, lambda to the i over i minus 1 factorial. Now, like before, I'm going to factor out a lambda. Lambda, e to the negative lambda. And since lambda doesn't have any i's, it's just lambda, I can pull it in front of their summation, and I get i times lambda to the i minus 1 over i minus 1 factorial. Unfortunately, that's still i. But nonetheless, I'm going to let j equal i minus 1. So this is lambda, e to the negative lambda. If you add 1 to both sides, you'll get i equals j plus 1. So j plus 1, and this will be lambda to the j, lambda to the j over j factorial. Now, remember that we showed that this equals this, which equals that, which equals that, which equals this mess, which equals lambda. It equals lambda. This summation is lambda. Okay, so I'm going to erase quite a bit here at the middle. And then we'll continue from there. Continue from the bottom. It's lambda e to the negative lambda times this. So it equals to lambda e to the negative lambda times the summation of, that you can distribute, j lambda to the j over j factorial, j, sorry, lam, yes, j, j lambda to the j over j factorial plus another summation. 1 times lambda to the j over j factorial. And this equals lambda e to the negative lambda. Now, this first summation I guess I need to put back okay. So, l let me distribute the e to the negative lambda. So I get lambda times the summation of e to the negative lambda, j, j to the lambda over j factorial plus, I distribute again, plus the summation e to the negative lambda, lambda to the j over j factorial. And I have to erase some more. Just remember that we are trying, we are figuring out what the expected value of x squared is. Just remember that's what we're doing now. I'll try to leave that up. So all I did was distribute the e to the negative lambda. So it's lambda times this. But this is exactly this one. It's exactly this one. Except instead of i's, we have j's. And this should be j factorial in the bottom. Instead of j factorial, we have i factorial. Lambda to the j, lambda to the i. There's j right there. There's i. e to the negative lambda, e to the negative lambda. That's lambda. That's lambda. Plus the summation of e to the negative lambda, lambda to the j over j factorial. And this is as j goes from 0, sorry, wouldn't matter, but 1 to infinity. 
this is lambda times lambda plus. I can pull this in front. It has nothing to do with j's. We're summing over j's. And we have lambda to the j over j factorial. But that summation I know. This, oops, looks like an x. This summation I know as j goes from 1 to infinity. It's e to the lambda. This product is 1. So you have lambda times lambda plus 1. e to the x, the expected value of x squared is lambda times lambda plus 1. Distributing, it's lambda squared plus lambda. Now here it is. It all comes together right now. The variance of x is e of x squared, which I just calculated, minus e of x all squared. Well, e of x squared is lambda squared plus lambda. We just calculated that right now, a moment ago. Minus e of x is lambda. And when you square it, you get lambda squared. And the lambda squares cancel, and you're just left with lambda. That is the variance and the expected value of x. Expected value of x is lambda, and the variance of x is lambda. You should try to think about what that means. Yeah, I can tell you about you'll forget it. You have to think of it on your own. What does this mean? Okay, let's do a couple of more problems. Here's a nice problem. Suppose there were 80,000 marriages last year in New Jersey. Suppose there were 80,000 marriages in the state of New Jersey last year. Eighty thousand marriages last year. And you want to estimate. Estimate the probability that at least one, at least, well, at least for one of these couples. The mates had the same birthday. Both partners have had had the same birthday. Had the same birthday. So you have eighty thousand people, and you want to find the well. That's not true. Eighty thousand marriages. 80,000 couples, 80,000 partners. And they got married last year. And you want to estimate the probability that at least for one of these couples, that is, for one of the couples, or two of the couples, or three of the couples, all the way up to all 80,000 couples, they both, both partners have or had the same birthday. Well, that, that's ridiculous to do it that way. The probability that, so let x equal the number of couples that had the same birthday. So at least one, well, that would be one or two or three. Why don't we use a complement? The probability that x is zero. 
that is 1 minus the probability that no couples had the same birthday. Okay. Now, since they said to estimate, we'll use uh, the percent distribution. Now, since they didn't tell us lambda, and it is kind of a binomial problem. Either they do have the same birthday for every pair, for every couple, either they do have the same birthday or they don't have the same birthday. And the probabilities never change. You take two people and you ask them, you have the same birthday? This on probability, one out of 365. You ask another pair of people whether they're married or not, you, you pick two random people, and you ask them if they have the same birthday, the probability would be 1 out of 365. No matter how often you do it, it would be 1 out of 365. Now, of course, and you have to make these assumptions in probability. That's assuming that each day is equally likely. You might have some people who prefer to have kids born in the summer. So, it's probably more likely than 1 out of 365 that somebody is born on June 20th or July 3rd. But since we have no way of having that information in front of us, we assume that it's random. Okay. So, N is 80,000. The probability of success is 1 out of 365. So lambda is 80,000 times n times p. 80,000 times 1 over 365, which is 80,000 over 365. Using my trusty calculator, 219.18. So, the probability that x is greater than 1, since I'm using the binomial, I'm going to say approximately. Well, actually, I'm not using it just yet. This 1 minus the probability that x equals 0. But now I'm going to use the binomial. 1 doesn't change. The minus doesn't change, but the probability that x equals 0. Remember, normally x equals i. So it's e to the negative lambda. Lambda is 219.18. e to the negative lambda. Lambda. Lambda to the i. But i is 0. i is 0. Lambda to the i all over, well, just this part, over i factorial. Now, anything to the 0 is 1, and 0 factorial is 1. So we have 1 minus e to this number times 1 divided by 1. Multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1 was not necessary. It's 1 minus e to the negative 219.18. In case you can't read that, it's 1 minus e to the negative 219.18. And this will finish the section on Poisson distribution. Actually, Poisson random variables.